let us now take a closer look at the mean value and standard deviation. And we will do that again on the example and we will use pipetting example again for this. So suppose we have a pipette and we are pipetting a volume which we denote by V. And we pipe it several times and we get each time a slightly different volume because of the random effects that affect pipetting. So the volumes that we actually get are the following. V1, V2, V3, etc. Until Vn. So these are here the individual volumes. And n is the number of measurements. Now, with these volumes, or with these values on volume, obtained during those parallel pipetting operations, we can cal calculate both the mean and the standard deviation very easily. We denote mean by Vm. And it is obviously found by summing up all those individual volumes and dividing by the number of the volumes. And this thing can be equally well written as follows. So here we denote by the sigma sign the sum of all these volumes. Each and every of those individual volumes here is denoted by the single vi and i changes from 1 to n. So that these two equations are equivalent. And now the standard deviation is calculated as follows. Here it is. So it is the square root of this term, which in the numerator has again a sum, again from 1 to n, meaning involving all those volumes. But now we sum up the squares of differences of each and every of these volume and the mean volume. And we divide all that by n minus 1 and finally take the square root. So mathematically speaking, standard deviation is something like a root mean square of differences of the individual volumes from the mean volume. And this minus one comes from the fact that we do not do infinite number of measurements, but we do a finite number of measurements. Now, the mean value for us characterizes the most probable volume that we obtain when we make pipetting. So every next volume that we pipette using the same pipette under these same conditions 
will most probably be very near to the mean value. But standard deviation characterizes the scatter, the spread of those values. It characterizes how well our parallel pipetting operations agree between themselves. And obviously, the smaller is the standard deviation, the better we are in pipetting. So, now, this standard deviation can be interpreted also in two very important ways. So, first of all, if now we have calculated this mean value and this standard deviation, then the probability of every next pipetting falling within the mean plus minus one standard deviation region is roughly 68%. And this percentage comes from the properties of the normal distribution function. So this is the first important thing. And the second important thing, we now come to the quantifying measurement uncertainty. And standard deviations are a very important means, actually the most important means of characterizing measurement uncertainty. And in fact, the uncertainty due to repeatability, meaning due to random effects of any individual pipetted volume, is characterized by the standard, standard deviation. And this uncertainty is denoted as the standard uncertainty. So we can speak about the standard uncertainty denoted by small u of this volume, which we measure by pipetting, due to repeatability, meaning this is one of the uncertainty components, the repeatability uncertainty component. And this is equal to this same standard deviation. Let us now briefly summarize what we just saw. So the mean value characterizes the most probable value with, that we can obtain by a next pipetting. Then the standard deviation characterizes the scatter and also the standard deviation carries two important bits of information. On one hand, it defines the range within which the probability of finding the next pipetted volume is roughly 68%. And finally, via standard deviation, we define standard uncertainty. which is denoted by small u. 
and oftentimes is also called uncertainty at the standard deviation level or in other words uncertainty at roughly 68% probability. In the very introductory slide I explained that uncertainty range always involves a certain probability, meaning we cannot define the range with 100% probability. So in this case, if uncertainty is expressed at the standard uncertainty level, the probability is roughly 68%. And we will see later on that standard uncertainty is perhaps the most important way of presenting uncertainty for us, because the calculations in uncertainty estimation all go via standard uncertainties. Meaning, if the uncertainty components of certain uncertainty sources are characterized by some other way, they all will need to be transformed into standard uncertainties before they can be combined.